Hi, I'm Raymond Weidekamp, and tonight I'm going to talk to you about the dark side of windows. So we use an enormous fraction of our energy on heating and cooling. So how many of you out there have a sunny room at home or work that's always hot? All right, quite a few. And I think you'll agree that while windows provide many benefits, they also present a number of challenges. Specifically, how can we keep that view without taking all of the heat that comes with it? So we're throwing 4% of US energy out the window, and we need a better solution. So what if you could apply a coating to the window that would allow the visible light to pass through, but effectively reflect the heat-carrying infrared light back to the sky? In warm climates, this would dramatically reduce the air conditioning requirements of homes and buildings. And this is because half of the sun's energy is in the form of infrared light. So by blocking it, we're efficiently blocking the heat. So even better, what if you could spray on that coating yourself without having to replace your windows? Widespread adoption of this solution could save 10% of US electricity. And in terms of the CO2 emissions, that's like removing 5 million cars from the road. So this is sort of the window analog of painting your rooftop white. And it can have a significant impact on energy savings. And this is not a new challenge. The problem is that the existing technologies are too expensive. So either they require the entire window to be replaced, or a trained professional needs to come in to install the heat reflecting film. And as a result of this price tag, the transition to energy efficient windows is too slow. So currently, to install these in your homes, the payback time is about 10 years. This is why my collaborators and I are working on a do-it-yourself retrofit solution, because the labor is the majority of the cost. So we're going to make that payback time one year instead of 10. So how do these films work? How can a material tra be transparent in the visible but reflect infrared light? And the trick is to take advantage of resonance, which occurs when the wavelength of light matches a repeating periodic structure within the material. So we're going to use many layers of transparent materials that are alternating periodically on the nanoscale to create a resonance between the infrared light that we want to reflect and the geometry of the structure. So in this image, the wavelength is twice the period of the structure. So let's see resonance in action. So I'm going to show you simulation. There's light uh, coming from the left and interacting with this multilayer film. And in the first simulation, the wavelength is too long. So we're off resonance, and it can efficiently pass through the material. In the second simulation, we're also off resonance, because the wavelength is now too short. So despite the fact that you'll see many reflections off of the many layers in this material, it too will ultimately pass through. But when the wavelength of light matches the period of the alternating structure, those reflections are now in sync. And so the resonant reflections add up, which means that most of the energy at this wavelength is now sent back towards the source. This is often referred to as structural color, because the optical properties of the material are determined by the geometry and not by the incorporation of a pigment or a dye. So structural color is everywhere. Nano-sized scales on butterfly wings are responsible for many of their beautiful colors. As well, the iridescence of opal gemstones is due to the packing of silica nanospheres. And while many applications of structural color require high precision engineering, we've been interested in leveraging self-assembly to let nature do the work for us. So the key driving force in self-assembly is surface energy. And this is best exemplified by oil and water, which will separate to minimize the contact between the two phases. Block copolymers are plastics that are composed of two different materials that are chemically linked together at a single point. So in a block copolymer, the oily half and the watery half can't separate. And so instead, they have to compromise and try to find a geometry that still minimizes that contact, which minimizes the surface energy. So in this image, we're watching a block copolymer film as it goes from this disordered state and self-assembles into this more ordered alternating multilayer. So this multilayer stack 
minimizes that energy uh, because it minimizes the area between the light and the dark regions of the image. And this is now starting to look familiar. However, if we use traditional linear block copolymers, it would be very difficult to make multi-layer films capable of reflecting infrared light. And this is because infrared light has a very long wavelength, which requires us to make large domain multilayers. And to get those large domains, we need long polymers, which can entangle on themselves. And so that entanglement presents an energetic barrier to self-assembly. And so as a result, these polymers typically require extreme processing conditions and have to be forced into assembling into an ordered structure. So to imagine that, visualize trying to untangle your spaghetti dinner and reline up all of the noodles as if they had just come out of the box. OK, so what if we could reduce the entanglement? What if instead of untying spaghetti, we could just line up gummy worms? So in my PhD work at Caltech in the Grubbs group, we showed that by changing the architecture of the block copolymer, we could drastically reduce the entanglement. And this architecture is called a bottle brush polymer because it consists of a rigid main polymer chain with flexible polymer brushes that are hanging off of the sides. And as a result of this architecture, the entanglement is much lower because the molecules are more rigid and we can self-assemble to films with very large domain sizes. Additionally, our molecular gummy worms can self-assemble at room temperature, which means that we can make paintable multi-layer films with resonant optical properties. So we've been able to use these bottle brush block copolymers to paint films with structural color that we can tune from the ultraviolet all the way across the visible spectrum into the infrared. However, there are still a number of challenges to realizing our heat reflecting window spray. Specifically, if we took this exact film, uh, sorry, these exact polymers and tried to spray them, the resulting film would be too hazy to use in a real application. So with the support of an ARPA-E grant from the Department of Energy, we're working with collaborators from Caltech, CU Boulder, and Materia to take this from a lab discovery <laughs> to that heat reflecting spray paint. Uh, so you guys threw me off there. If we're successful, plenty of time. If we're successful, in a couple of years, you'll be able to have your view and stay cool too. Thank you.